Hello, I'm Beth Schaefer, a member of the League of Women Voters of the Greater Dayton area. I am here today with candidates running for the Centerville School Board. The candidates are David Cobb, Allison Dernbaugh, and Amanda Graf Hurst. We'll start the interviews by giving each candidate one minute to tell us about themselves and why they want to serve on the Centerville School Board. And let's go ahead and we'll start with you, David. Sure. You know, my name is David Cobb, and I'm the father of three uh, Centerville School students. I'm a Centerville School camp. I'm a Centerville School graduate myself, and um, I'm a retired Centerville School worker um, and a lifelong resident of Centerville Schools the District and Schools, um, Washington Township area. And I mess up a lot. Over the years, I've seen our schools just keep getting better and better, though, and for more and more of our children. Um, I'm running for a seat on the board so that. Um, I can help keep supporting that better and better growth to the school system. We've done a great job of reaching out to students um, of many backgrounds and different needs. And I believe that our schools are one of the most important ways that we can continue to reach out to those children. I've heard some people are happy with the way things are. Um, some people even want to go back a little bit, but I'm not one of those people. I'm running for the seat on the school board so that I can support the teachers, the staff, and the volunteers um, who still see ways to improve. And I'm ready to support every great thing that's coming for every one of our students. Thank you. Thank you, David. Allison, uh, you have the opportunity to tell us a little bit about why you want to run. Great, thank you so much. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for the opportunity today. I am Allison Dernbaugh. I am currently serving as the Vice President of the Centerville School Board and finishing up my first term. Four years ago, I campaigned on the need for a, a current updated strategic plan, mission and vision for the district. And I'm proud to be back here with a new plan in place and, and well into its implementation. I'm proud to have served on the planning committee for the plan, uh, for the strategic plan, as well as the, the committee developing the portrait of an ELSE document, which illustrates what we want all of our students to have in their toolbook upon graduation. I am a parent of two current students in the district and a recent graduate, which gives me the opportunity to see what Centerville Schools does for our students and how they can progress past their K-12 education. I am proud to have served these past four years and I look forward to serving for another term. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, uh, you can tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wanna serve on the school board. Thank you. And I'll echo the thanks to the League of Women Voters for allowing us this opportunity. My name is Amanda Graf Hurst. I am a graduate of Centerville. I am a parent of two children in the district. I um, am a local physician and pediatrician taking care of newborns in our area. Um, I am running for a seat on the Centerville School Board because I can see opportunity to um, help to improve our school district. And I am very invested in the health and well being, both the mental health and the physical health of children from birth all the way through their school age years in our community. And I would like the opportunity to continue to help support our school district in caring for those students all the way through their academic career. Okay, thank you all. Now I'm going to ask each candidate the same question uh, and you will have two minutes to speak to each question and then I'll move on to the next person to answer the same question. The first question is, describe the role of a school board member as you see it. And so let's start off with David. Well, this is actually a pretty short answer for me. I really um, endorse and, and accept the definition of a school board by the um, Ohio Association of School Boards, um, or the Ohio School Boards Association, I should say, that we are a policymaking board and a um, a way for the superintendent and staff to hear the um, um, concerns of the community. So uh, that's really what I'm going to be doing as a school board member. And, um, and honestly, that's my two minutes. I yield the rest of my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Amanda, uh, would you tell us a little bit uh, as to what you see the role of a school board member to be? Sure. Um, you know, I think at its most basic definition, the role of a school board is to serve as a 
policy making and governance board for the school district um, by overseeing and employing the superintendent and the treasurer of that district. They then hold the accountability to the public by being elected by popular election. Um, and so I think that they do have an accountability, a role um, in maintaining that trust and communication with the taxpayers, with the community. Um, and that does include um, not only board policies, but also approving the board's and the district's budget um, each year and ensuring that taxpayer dollars are allocated efficiently, effectively, that um, we are cautious and wise in how we ask taxpayers for money, particularly in these times. Um, I think that this is a, a difficult time for several of our community members and our, our schools are so important to our communities. And so um, it is the board's responsibility, I think, to really protect our schools, protect our, our children and those assets, but also advocate both at the state level and the community level for the taxpayers and the children all at the same time. Okay, thank you. Um, Allison, give it your, your response is why you Absolutely. see. Absolutely. The, um, the role of the board member at its core is to hire and, and um, evaluate the superintendent and treasurer and set policy for the district, which both David and Amanda touched on. Um, in addition to that, it is within those those roles, it is important that we are executing our strategic plan and that's how we evaluate our superintendent treasurer, how we make sure that we're wisely spending taxpayer dollars. And then in addition to those basic core roles, I believe that those school board members should be a conduit to the community. So be available for com the community members, parents, even students to ask questions, seek out information. Um, that doesn't mean that we're there to solve individual problems, but it has been my role the past four years to help guide people to with questions and with concerns to the proper department, to the proper personnel to have those concerns heard and then follow up and make sure that the information has gotten through. Um, as Amanda stated, we are duly elected by the community. We are here to serve the entire community, not just the people that signed our petition, not just the people that put up our signs. We're here for everybody. And so agree or disagree, I take that role very, very seriously and try to be responsive to the community when they reach out. Uh, thank you. Our uh, next question is, as a school board member, how will you address parents' concerns? And let's go ahead and let's start this off uh, with Amanda. Okay, what do you see? Uh, or how would you address parents' concerns? Um, I think that in, in Allison's previous answer, she touched on a, a part of it. Um, I think that active listening without judgment, without interruption, I think that um, there are instances where there will be individual parent concerns that are not necessarily appropriately addressed by the board, but it is a board member's role to help those parents um, and guide them towards the appropriate personnel in the district to help with those concerns. At the board level, the you know meeting time, the public meeting time that is allotted to hear the public concerns, I think is crucial. I think that helps to identify um, topics and issues that the district really can then um, identify as topics to pursue and to find solutions for. I also think it's very important that parents and other community members um, have the opportunity to see the board um, working with administration, working with staff and students to, in a as transparently as possible, develop collaborative solutions so that members of the community do feel heard and valued um, throughout that process. Okay, thank you. Uh... Let's see, uh, David, I'm mm -hmm. gonna ask you the same question. As a school board member, how would you address parents' concerns? Sure. So as a school board member, what I plan to do is seek out 
um, feedback from parents and students with concerns. And of course, like Amanda said, be ready to listen. Um, when possible, I'm gonna seek out or I'm gonna help students find the solutions for their concerns within the school district or within the community. And if it's necessary and feasible, I will advocate for fair and careful policy changes to deal with those concerns. And that's my time, thank you. All right, thank you. Allison. To uh, piggyback on my previous answer, I think the biggest thing we can do to address parent concerns is be available and be that conduit to the district personnel, to the administration. Um, oftentimes I get maybe stopped by somebody I know, maybe somebody I don't know, who has a question very specific to their student or their school or their situation. And they're not necessarily looking for a solution. They don't know where to go. And that's, that's the best way for us to address parent concerns is direct them to the proper place. And oftentimes when I do that, I'll follow up with the superintendent and say, hey, just to let you know, I had this conversation. This was the concern. I directed them here. Could you please follow up? The bottom line is as school board members and as a school board, our only two direct employees are the superintendent and the treasurer. So it really isn't appropriate for us to go to a building principal or, or even a teacher and, and handle those individual concerns, whether they come to us through email, through a phone call, a stop on the street, or even public comment. The, the proper way for us to handle that is to make sure that the community knows how to get their a solution to their issue or an answer to their basic question and, and just follow up through our proper channels. And again, my past four years, I have prided myself on being available to the community and I continue, plan to continue that. Okay, thank you. Our third and last question is, what do you see as the most important issues facing your school district? And uh, David, I'm gonna let you start this one off. Sure, um, and this is one time I might go over, so I'm excited. <laughs> um, the first big issue that we have, one of the most important issues, and I think everyone knows this, is recovering from the pandemic. Um, clearly, our students are a little bit behind academically. I think we're doing a lot better than many schools in the area and in the country. But our, but in general, students are behind because of the pandemic, but academically. They're also behind a little bit in enthusiasm and excitement, from what I can tell. I read an article the other day in the newspaper, in the Dayton Daily, about how... Um, kids weren't sure about what futures were they were going to go for now because they've had this interruption. And we don't even know how students are going to be feeling that, you know, had their third grade classes interrupted or their fifth grade classes or their eighth grade classes. Um, I think it's just so important that we um, have a transparent um, cooperation between teachers and parents and, um, and students to make sure that everybody is on track to go back, to get back to our pre- um, pandemic levels of excitement and um, and uh, academic achievement, regardless of what they plan to do afterwards, whether they plan to enroll in um, a college afterwards or enlist in, um, in the military, or whether they plan to be in the skilled trades or any other event. We need to make sure that they have the excitement and the um, necessary tools to do those things, just as well as the people before the pandemic did. The other challenge I see we have is um, digital resources. You know, we've got so many digital options right now for kids. There's great ways to research things and to find facts, um, to connect with people and to get their material, to get their ideas out there. But that's also led to problems with self-esteem through social media, through, um, uh, abusive situations outside of the, you know, from people outside the district, as we learned the other day in a uh, course about student safety. It's just so important that we make sure we have ways to teach kids to use the digital resources they have and be safe from the dangers that they present. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Um, Allison, what do you see as the most important issues facing your school district? I believe the most important issue facing the school district today and facing really public education in general is still school funding, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure I had the same answer four years ago, and, and unfortunately, we're still in the same boat. Um, the state legislature has enacted the Fair School Funding Plan, and they are working towards fully funding that, and that's great. That has given us in Centerville a guarantee, which means that our state funding level won't decrease under that plan. Fortunately, it also won't increase. And that situation or that that fact puts us in a situation where we rely too heavily on our local taxpayer dollars to fund 
our basic operations and to fund uh, any permanent improvement, any building issues, anything like that. And that is that is just an unfair burden that, that we have in Centerville um, because of we're blessed with high um, uh, high income levels and and uh, a high wealth factor, as the state calls it. Um, the the state funding issue is is ongoing, and it's it's becoming a bigger issue simply because, as we all know, since the pandemic, costs have gone through the roof. A, a bus that cost the district, you know, that we bought two years ago now costs us almost $30,000 more, same bus. And, and that's just unsustainable um, in, in our current situation. And unfortunately the state isn't, is putting us on that guarantee, which isn't helping us. It's, it's forcing us in fact, to rely more and more on the taxpayers. Um, I really wish I had a different answer from four years ago. Uh, unfortunately, I really think that is still the number one issue that our district faces. Okay. Oh, thank you. Amanda, what do you see as the most important issues facing your school district? I have to agree with Allison. Um, I think that school funding is the is the critical issue for our district. Um, and I would echo with, with rising costs and a reg relatively um, stagnant revenue stream. Um, we do rely very heavily on property tax dollars. Um, and in our community, that's, that's a challenge um, and a concern for for many of our community members. Um, I think that that, you know, I, I agree with, with many of the things that Allison brought up in terms of rising costs. I think that also then lends itself to um, a secondary issue that is um, what is most likely to become a, a very critical teacher shortage and staffing shortage. Um, and that has a lot to do with um, funding and, and budgeting um, and what we are able to, comp, you know, provide as compensation for those people that we are relying on to teach our children. Um, there just are not enough people going into education currently. Um, there are risks to teachers um, that are very real and some that are certainly perceived um, currently. And, um, and that will that will end up being a, a very important challenge that we will have to face um, in the not too distant future, I fear. Thank you. So in closing, we'd like to provide each candidate with a minute for a closing statement. And uh, let's go ahead, Allison, and allow you to make your closing statement first. All right, thank you. Um, once again, I'd really like to thank the League of Women's Voters uh, for the opportunity today um, for, for this forum and for the three of us to get together and explain our views and why we're here. Um, I have proudly served this district for the last four years. I have, um, I have put my heart and soul into this role, and I really am asked constantly, do you enjoy it? Because I was elected right before the pandemic. Do you enjoy it? Is there anything you would change? And short of changing the pandemic, um, there isn't anything I would change. I have, I have enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoy working with the community, working with our administration, uh, collaborating with the city and the township and the parks and, and our other public entities. And I look forward to continuing that service for another four years. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, you have the opportunity to make your closing statement. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you to the League of Women Voters for allowing us this opportunity. Thank you, David and Allison, for, for being part of this. Um, I am so proud to be a member of the Centerville community. Um, this is my home. This is where I have chosen to raise and have my children educated. Um, I am very invested in this community and in our future and in our children. Um, I am excited about the opportunity um, to be able to give back to a community that has given me so many opportunities. And so I hope that I will um, be elected this fall and be able to serve on our school board. Okay, thank you. All right, David, um, you have an opportunity to make your closing statement. 
Great. Thank you. And I guess I'm remiss. I forgot to thank the League of Women Voters to begin with, but I do thank them for this opportunity. I just want to say that I believe that we need to empower, challenge, and support every learner. And no matter who they are, what they believe, how they learn, what obstacles they face, where they're from, who they love, or what they need to succeed. And I support right there, all those learners. I also support our instructors and paraprofessionals who teach our children. I support our nurses, our bus drivers, our custodians, our counselors, our nutrition workers who keep our students safe, healthy, and ready to learn every day. I support everyone who guides our school, including the current school board members, um, and, and, and getting us in the direction of learning and success. Um, and of course, I su support our families, our community and our families who support the schools, who trust us with our kids, with their kids, my kids too. As a school board member, I will support careful spending and ambitious efforts so that our schools can keep being a vital place for our students to learn and grow and be challenged. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your participation today. Good luck in your campaigns. The League of Women Voters encourages all candidates to run an issues-oriented campaign. Our goal is to educate the voting public and strengthen our electoral political process. The annual Voter's Guide will be distributed in mid-October in Dayton, in the Dayton Daily News, AIM Media Suburban Newspapers, and at local libraries, schools, and businesses. Early voting for the upcoming election begins October 11th at your Board of Elections, or you can request an absentee ballot. However you decide to vote, your opinion matters only if you do vote and help make our democracy work. The League also wishes to thank the wonderful staff at Miami uh, Valley uh, Communications Council for their assistance today.